What's going on, guys? Welcome back here to another weekly technical talk. Corey Smith here, CoreFX, um, bringing you guys another video. Today is Friday, October 26th. It's 1.30 p.m. Still got some market movement going on. Had a pretty good week here in Forex markets. Anybody new to these videos, I go ahead and take a dive into the technical world of Forex trading. We go through all of the major indexes for each individual currency. We go over the U.S. dollar major crosses. We go over the um, S&P 500 U.S. equity markets index. We go over gold, oil, and I dive into my exact watch list for the week ahead. What we'll be looking at, what trades I'll be watching for setting up. Um, anybody who hasn't been here before, I appreciate you taking the time to come and watch these videos. I really hope you enjoy what you see. If you do, throw a like, throw a comment, subscribe so you're notified when they come out. I do these videos every week. My returning viewers, love you guys. Always appreciate it. Um, I hope you guys are still enjoying these. So I'm going to go ahead and jump into the charts now, dive into some technical analysis, see what's going on, and uh, see what we got ahead for next week. All righty. All right, guys. So starting with the relative performance of the week, as you can see, the Japanese yen, Canadian dollar, U.S. dollar were the top performers. We had the pound, New Zealand dollar, euro as the bottom performers. Um, this tells us you know, what was going on in the markets. We had a risk-off theme in the markets as we had the worst week since 2013 in the U.S. equity markets, really selling off around the world. Um, as there's a lot going on in the global macroeconomic markets. Overall, the U.S. is still definitely trucking along strong. We had a GDP report this morning, um, beat expectations, so we're seeing strong, steady, um, the best growth we've seen in over a decade as far as GDP goes in the U.S., so nothing really to worry about, but we are seeing a strong correction in the equity markets. That's causing us to see a sell-off in the Aussie and New Zealand. <clears throat> That's causing us to see strength in the yen and the dollar. Um, really just all in all having that risk-off theme in the markets this week. So we'll see if this continues in the next week. Um, I don't see a reason why it wouldn't. That's why we like to use this relative performance. We want to catch these momentums and follow them into the following weeks, into the following days. Ride what's selling strong. Ride what's growing strong. Um, that is what the currency markets do. They are very strong trending markets, and that's what we want to do catch these trending pairs and ride the trend. So this takes us over to the chart, starting with the Dixie, the US dollar index. As you guys know, a couple weeks ago, we were watching this as we broke this trend line, had this strong strength move up above the 50 SMA, breaking structure, setting this new higher high, right? Price pulled back, set a higher low. We had some range bound movements here, followed by a spinning top indecision candle. This was the 50% Fibonacci pullback of this move from this swing low to this swing high with this market structure breaking higher high, price pulled back down to this higher low, right on the 50 SMA. I mean, 50% Fibonacci, sorry, um, on the 20 SMA. And price did in fact bounce off there. We saw this strong bullish momentum candle, bounced off there, broke right through 95.50, came up stalled under 96 for a little bit, and then this week continued to break higher from there. Um, so after we set a higher high in the markets, what we typically anticipate is a higher low, some sort of a pullback, some sort of a um, sell-off, profit-taking, whatever you want to call it. We get a correction in the markets. Price pulls back. 96 would be a nice level. I'd be looking to um, get back along the dollar, right? So if price pulls back to here early next week, that'd be a nice opportunity to look to start looking for longs. We'll see how this candle closes here on Friday. Um, bearish engulfing candle close here would show a little bit more of a potential for a correction, a sell-off, than if we just see this close up closer to the open, more of a spinning top type candle. But we'll have to wait and see. The dollar did push higher initially this morning, um, but then pulled back down lower below the open. So we'll have to keep an eye on the US dollar. I am expecting a correction. And then next week sometime, we'll be looking for more of a um, rally to continue this trend. That switches us over to the Euro. Similar story, uh, inverted chart. As you can see here, we were setting, we were in a downtrend in a low base, Broke lower, false breakout, immediately broke back up so above support. Structure broke with this higher high, pulled back for a higher low. Set another higher high, pulled back, thought we could have been reversing this trend, but then we got another push lower. Set a lower low again, pulled back for a lower high, retested the 50 SMA. This is when I was calling for potential shorts, and that's exactly what it did. It sold off, stalled a little bit, sold off again. We're now back down at support, 108.50. This looks a lot more like it's going to close a bullish engulfing today. Um, that would show, you know, again, similar story, look for the next rally. Now, after this sell-off, we look for a rally. Price could come back up here to 109.80, somewhere in this range, or we could get a deeper pullback back up to, let's say, 110.50 maybe. That acts as a resistance. Then we look for shorts and catch the next push lower. Um, but we're in a downtrend. Price has moved back down to support, testing support. So now we want to look for short opportunities in the euro. 
Japanese yen, <clears throat> as you guys can see, we violated this downtrend, setting this higher high over here. I mean, this lower high over here, we have based, broke this trend line now, broke above the 50 SMA, and now is when we're starting to violate it, right? So um, this was a move lower, this was a pullback, pullback turned into more of a consolidation. Now it looks like the pullback could be turning into a reversal. However, we do have a very large upper wick rejection candle here on this resistance on somewhat on the 50 SMA. It's above the 50 SMA right now, but we'll see how it closes on the day. And we still have this long rejection wick to the upside. So realistically, for the yen, can't really be too sure of anything until we have a break of this box, right? This range that price has been in after setting this lower low, pull back for a lower high, broke the trend line, now breaking the 50 SMA. So we are starting to break out of our um, <clears throat> downtrend. However, this structure is still holding with this lower high here. This wick temporarily went above it, but has immediately come down. So if we're able to close below this lower high, shorts are still potentially on the table. Um, but with this risk off theme in the markets, I could see some more strength coming to the end and potentially the weeks to come. Um, we could see this yen reverse into an uptrend now. So we'll have to keep an eye on that pair. <clears throat> British pound, we thought after going into this week, we could be seeing a higher low, pull back for another push higher, but with all the Brexit concerns and all, price did break this trend. So we are now back into a downtrend. We set a market structure changing lower low, price broke below the 50 SMA, 20 SMA is about to break the 50 SMA, cross under it. Um, so we're down back into a downtrend now. So what does that tell us? We want to wait for price to rally now, potentially up to this area, 126 or so. Maybe it hits this level, bounces off. Maybe the 50 SMA comes back around by then, acts as resistance as well. Bounce off that, and we look for short opportunities to catch that next leg lower with the pound. But the pound is now structurally and technically in back to the downtrend. <clears throat> Canadian dollar, as you guys can see, we broke out of this range, broke out of the next trend line, um, started to push lower. We had the Bank of Canada hike interest rates this week, Wednesday on their meeting. We saw a big, big spike in CAD at first, but it immediately sold off, pulled back, respected the 20 and 50 SMAs, and moved back lower. <clears throat> we now are opened lower, and we're now closing back up by this resistance here at 75.50. So I have to see, I do still think we are remaining short with the CAD. Um, I think if hiking rates like that, after that mist of a CPI number, they stuck to their plan, they hiked rates, and if that wasn't able to push CAD back up above these SMAs and back up into an upward move, uh, maybe we'll see a continued sell-off because they are hesitant now moving forward with their rate hiking. So um, keep an eye on the Canadian dollar, but I think we will see a rollover this coming week. Swiss franc, <clears throat> we're on this strong support. We broke below it, but price has immediately reversed back up to it. Um, really have to wait and see. This could be a nice selling opportunity if we'd see price starting to roll over going into next week. But if we get a bounce back up above the support, um, chances are <clears throat> it'll be more of a buying opportunity out of this pair. As you can see, every time it's come down and failed to break this level, we've had a strong push away from it. So we came into this level with very strong bearish momentum. Let's see if that momentum can continue and break through that zone. Thanks to the Aussie, which has still been respecting this downtrend. Set a lower low, pull back for a lower high. This week we were talking about it coming back down, retest the lows. And it didn't quite retest the lows of this move, but it did pull back down again. Today we are closing back up higher. We see some strength coming back to the Aussie as we're bouncing off this support. We'll have to wait and see what price does coming into this week. If we're going to get a bounce here, maybe get a double bottom reverse trend with a break of this trend line and structure and look for longs. Or if this support eventually gets broken and we continue to the downside. This is a beautiful trend we're respecting, so we want to look for it to continue respecting the trend, but plan on being able to change our analysis if it doesn't. Over here, we have the New Zealand dollars chart. Um, as you guys can see, we'll switch it over to the weekly real quick. As you guys can see, we've been still following this consistent downtrend, right? Came up, <clears throat> had this bearish candle, pushed lower. We have um, not engulfed this prior bull candle on this weekly chart, so that is something... Um, definitely to keep an eye on. If it closes not engulfing that, then you know we have to be a little hesitant with where this pair is going. As you can see here, we set a lower low, pulled back for a lower high on this 66 resistance again, very strong level, sold off, started to move lower. And again, as you can see, sorry for this stupid ad. Um, as you can see, we have a rejection candle to the downside here on this Friday candle, on this Friday candle right here, right? So we have price starting to sell off, pulling back off the lows of the day, closing up higher. This could be a sign that this looks like it might be losing momentum, 
Maybe we come and break this trend line, break this 66 resistance, and then maybe we reverse trend to the upside in the end in the New Zealand dollar. So another one to keep an eye out and see what's going on. So this takes us over to our U.S. dollar crosses, starting with the euro dollar. Um, as we knew going into this week, price has made a lower low, made a lower high, pulled back down and was sitting on our lower low. We were talking about a potential bounce or for price to continue the downtrend, and that's exactly what it did. Wednesday, Thursday, we continued this downtrend, broke this strong support at 145, came down and tapped this strong zone down here at around 113.50 to 113. Um, we are bouncing off that. We're getting what looks like is going to be a bullish engulfing candle. Um, so again, I expect a rally. I expect some kind of a pullback. Look for shorting opportunities after we get that pullback as we are now in a downtrend, setting lower lows, lower highs, lower lows. Pound dollar. Decently similar story. We violated the uptrend, set a lower low this past week below the 50 SMA. 50s crossing, uh, the 20s crossing below the 50. We are now on a daily support right above a weekly support. Um, so I do think we'll get a little bit of a bounce. Maybe we set a lower high up here at around 129.50. Maybe we come all the way up to 130 um, before continuing lower. But I think we'll see a rally and then sell off to continue shorting this pair. <clears throat> Dollar CAD, really, really ugly price action this week, in my opinion. We've got these two massive spike wicks to the downside here, which is like 100 pip moves each way. And then we got this massive one to the upside, similar story. So um, really just faking people out. Thought it was selling off strong here. We actually shorted this triple top here at Core FX. One, two, three. Shorted it around here. Caught this massive spike. spike cashed out here at the um, 200 SMA. And then price did reverse pretty damn strong off of that. But um, really just a lot of choppy, fake out, false break type moves. Staying away from this pair for a little while, still respecting this upper trend line, but still also respecting 50 SMA and this push higher. So we'll have to wait and see what the dollar cat is going to tell us coming in the weeks. Dollar yen, another one that's a little bit of a mixed bag. We're still pretty range bound in here. Um, looked like this could have been a pullback in an uptrend to continue higher. Started to break higher and then immediately reversed. Started to break lower below support and 50 SMA and has pulled back. As you guys will see in the charts I'll go to next, the Japanese yen is showing us some um, weakness. It, it showed us some very strong moves this morning. It was pushing most pairs across the board lower. Um, it has pulled back on the day significantly. So we'll have to keep an eye and see how the yen is reacting the rest of the day. But that is, there's a lot of pairs on strong supports. Like you see this one is where price failed to break through and is pulling back, leaving a rejection wick which is showing me that potentially going into next week, we could be seeing some weakness in the yen. I would like to pair that up with the U.S. equity markets performing again. I'd like to see some strength return in the U.S. equity markets that would fundamentally back our technical analysis of the yen showing me that. But um, we'll have to wait and see what next week shows us as far as that goes. Dollar Swiss franc back up on a very strong level. This parity $1 um, resistance, we get a little bit of a tweezer top, might have a bearish engulfing off of this strong supply zone overhead here. Um, also very strong weekly resistance marked with this blue line. So again, we're in a strong uptrend, setting higher highs and higher lows. Prices above the SMAs. We've got 250, 20, all in the perfect order, nice spacing, all for the most part sloping upwards. So technically this is an uptrend all day long. However, um, we're hitting strong resistance after a nice strong bullish move. So we want to wait for price to come back to us, pull back. This would be a very nice level um, in here to try to look for some longs. Right, anywhere's in this whole area, we've got lots of um, support and resistance levels. So we can wait for price to pull back to around there to look for longs. Or if you're a reversal trader, maybe you go on to the lower time frames and potentially find a pattern or so um, and try to short this to the downside. But either way, there's plenty of opportunities <coughs> across the board with these pairs. Aussie dollar continuing this downtrend. Um, something that immediately jumps out at me here and not really seeing it in divergence, but um, immediately I see a double bottom potentially forming, right? So we started to break through the support, failed to, are now closing above where we opened on the day, and we have a long lower rejection wick hammer candle off this zone. Second failed touch, we're starting to see a slowdown in this trend with an Aussie and New Zealand, so um, I'm a big time trend trader and I'm always looking to continue the trend, but you gotta be weary of setups like this, and this could be a nice potential double bottom play if we get a break of this neckline pulls back, maybe we get a break of this a break and retest of this trend line too. try to catch that long, right? So some good opportunities coming up, potentially double bottom here playing out on Aussie dollar. We'll keep an eye on 
and New Zealand dollar, US dollar, as you can see, we are in this downtrend still. Lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high. Um, <clears throat> we caught a nice short off of this pair as well this week in uh, Core FX signal room. We had the break of this counter trend line. Price broke this strong weekly level, sold off, hit our take profits, and immediately reversed. That's what that dollar whip song off that GDP event today. Um, another one here that's this is a strong weekly level, although we broke through it. We are now pulling back up. Long rejection wick here. Um, that does not look very good for short opportunities. So we'll have to keep an eye and see how this pair plays out and what it's going to do moving forward. But potentially for now, um, we'll keep an eye on what this candle does. And if price is able to move up, we'll look for a break of the 50 SMA counter trend line. I mean, lower downward trend line and market structure. If we get a break and retest of that, we can look for long opportunities. All right. So now diving into my watch list. Alrighty, so starting with my watch list, we've got the New Zealand dollar, Japanese yen here. Uh, very interesting setup. Not too um, eager to pull a trigger on any trade, but I want to share this weekly level we got here. As you can see, um, this weekly support here, this blue line, we got one touch, two touch, three touch, fourth touch with this big rejection wick. Um, Japanese yen today started strong, bounced off support, and has pulled back across the board on all the pairs. Um, Interesting, interesting, interesting price action. Buyers have come in, pulled back off the lows. So uh, we could be seeing a reversal here in the end. It really depends a lot on the equity markets, what we got going on with this risk on, risk off theme. But the yen is back on this support here in New Zealand yen. And uh, with this rejection of the zone, we could be looking for a bounce, long opportunity off of this fourth touch here to this support. Next, we got the pound Swiss franc. We got a trend changing higher high push here. Broke 50 SMA, 20 crossed above the 50, sold off, hit the 200 SMA and this resistance and this supply zone, sold off. We're now um, nearing the 50 SMA again and a support level, throwing Fibonacci out here. You can see from the prior swing low to the prior swing high, we're right on a 50% Fib. So what I'll be watching for now is price to find some support around this 50 SMA and look for a potential long opportunity to ride this next push higher. Euro Aussie. Um, double top tier on this daily chart off this 163.50 resistance, <coughs> sitting down now on support. We broke the 50 SMA. We're nearing this daily somewhat of a trend line. Um, on this support of this neckline, I'm looking for a move like this break of the support, break of this trend line, break of this market structure, pull back, and then bang, catch the next move lower. So um, nothing immediately to run after here, but we'll see if it breaks this channel, see if this. Um, double top plays out and it breaks this neckline. We got a strong rejection wick on the upside here. So uh, that is showing us that <clears throat> the bears look like they might be coming in to take over here. Euro Swiss franc, similar to that pound Swiss franc we just went over. Trend changing move to the upside. Broke 50 SMA, broke trend line, broke structure. Boom, set a new higher high. Resistance held, pulled back. Now hitting the 50 SMA on this support. Spinning top candle, getting some support found here. Look for now long opportunities to set the next higher high, right? So we had price trend changing higher high. Then we get this pullback. Now catch the next impulse move higher high. And then maybe we get out before this pullback, right? So that's what we're looking for here on the Euro Swiss. All is in New Zealand. As you guys can see here, another one, but inverted. We had a trend changing break lower, broke trend line, broke 50 SMA, broke 200 SMA, but did reverse, pulled back up. Um, but now we set this lower low pulling back up to a lower high. Um, and now, as you can see here, we are back up to this lower high on this 1.090 resistance. And um, 50 SMA is closing in, 20 SMA is closing in. So now we're going to look for resistance to get found here and for price to roll over and catch that next lower low now move to the downside. Moving on to New Zealand dollar Swiss franc. Um, again, with the trend changing, we have a higher high. Pull back, indecision doji, indecision doji on the crossover of the 20 and the 50 SMA, 50 starting to curl. We're going to look for long opportunities on this pair now on this support turned resistance, now turned support again. See if we can catch the next swing higher off this bounce. All right, um, that takes us over really quickly to the indexes. S&P 500, this is the sell-off we've been seeing in the dollar. I mean, in the U.S. equity market, extreme sell-off. Um, this is leading to the worst week in uh, five years. We have potentially the worst month in a long time. But consumer confidence remains at 
over a decade highs. Um, GDP today just broke expectations, strong growth. Um, really nothing too crazy or catastrophic as far as fundamentals go for the U.S. equity to um, really get too worried about this sell-off. But as far as stock market sell-offs go, this is a strong one. People panic in times like this. They start calling up their Charles Schwab reps, their Fidelity reps, and they start telling them to get their money out of this stuff because they're watching it go into the red. Um, that causes more fear, more panic, more sell-off. So we want to keep an eye on this, see what price is doing. We have totally reversed this upward trend. Um, definitely want to keep an eye on the S&P 500. Gold has been pushing to the upside, broke above this resistance. Now support level, uh, 20 crossed above the 50, both curling upwards now. We do have a rejection to the resistance here, but I think gold continues to move higher, especially if we see the S&P 500 selling off. And oil broke below another level again this week, breaking below $68 a barrel. Pulling back up now to retest it. As you can see, if you look left, this is a pretty strong level, not only psychologically, but as you can see, price has respected it a lot in the past. So we could see price respect this 200 SMA resistance, $68 a barrel psychological level, and get a continued sell-off in the oil market here as oil is showing us some weakness. All right, guys, that does it for this week's um, weekly technical talk. I hope you guys enjoy what you're seeing here. I hope you guys um, get some value out of it and you know learn something about the markets here um i really enjoy making these videos but it takes a lot of time out of my week to do them so i really hope you guys are getting value out of them uh, check out the website corefxtrading.com if you guys want to learn more about trading also have a free signal room every month where we give out free trade alerts i mean <clears throat> where we give out trade alerts we have a free one week trial for it though if you're interested in it i'll put the link below um just make sure you check it out and fill in the form to get your sign up for the free week trial. Give it a shot for a week. Hopefully make some money to pay for the next month or couple months and join the team here at CoreFX. Also have a full Forex trading course. Um, covers everything you need to learn to succeed and turn around your trading to become a profitable trader or get into trading and learn from the beginning up how to trade. All right, guys. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed these videos. Um, I hope I catch you guys next week. Make sure to like subscribe, comment. If you throw a subscribe, you'll be updated when I put these new videos out every week. So thank you guys. I really appreciate it. Um, I hope y'all have a great weekend and I'll catch you next week.